The Mike Chronicles. Day Hefezep. All night, I'd been pestered by groupies wanting my autograph, and as I left the house, I could see one of the more timid of them peeking over a bush, gushing like a schoolgirl. Frank, stalker patrol, give her a signed headshot and pry her out of the petunias, will ya? I made my way back to the cave system I'd graveled the day before. What I'd already found and taken away was surely just the tip of a veritable iceberg of gravel, awaiting my calm and careful inspections. As I meandered through the stone courtyards, I caught sight of a growth of mushroom at the maw of a certain cave. A bit of mushroom stew would be a nice change from the diet of seeds and cheese that had been making my bowel movements an all-too-noteworthy affair. But of course, where there's mushrooms, there's often a mushroom keeper. Keeper of the mushrooms, you might say, or maybe the mushroom man, although that could be misinterpreted. To the left, I found more mushrooms. He had been a busy little mushroom man. To the right, a dead end in the form of the entrance to another dark and horror-filled cave. Trapped between proverbial rock and a hard place, I climbed onto a too high stone precipice. Oh, crap. I, I think he's got friends. I hear them coming. I'm not sure from where. Is it a pincer? Someone, check my six. I think I'm being flanked. Oh, thank Jordash, you fools. Filing in one by one to be buried by the pawn. Eat cold stick, you walking cucumber. Your mother was a kiwi, and your father smelt of... Sheep? Why, why is there a sheep here? What is this, a meeting? Hello, my name is Ronan Pawn, Hello, Paul. and I'm an alcoholic. Sheep, you and me are getting the hell out of here. Had enough bravery for a day. Sheep, grab some donuts as we go. After I'd changed underpants and downed some liquid courage, I returned to the caves to explore them from another angle. Three mushrooms and two dead zombies didn't answer the call for gravel after all, and surely there was more of it to be found somewhere in here. I just needed to continue exploring it despite my many pangs of terror. Aha! That's the kind of gravel hole I'm looking for. Brilliant. Tomorrow, I'll return to claim this bounty, and perhaps, along with it, the last of the Mushroom Man's stash. Not, not the Mushroom Man's mustache. He's, he's dead. It burned. Probably. Frank, take in one of the pumpkins and uncork a bottle. We're celebrating with mushrooms tonight. Oh, that could be misinterpreted, too. After a glorious meal of mushroom, pumpkin, and wine, I left Frank passed out in the fields, mumbling something about elderberries, and began the night's dig of gravel. It was a slow yield to the flint I needed, but a steady drip in time was all I'd need to carve a canyon. A steady drip, time, and some peace and bloody quiet would be nice for once. Tell you what, you like to dig? Okay, I'll give you something to dig. Prove yourself worthy, and maybe I'll make you an apprentice. Well, the intern played in the sand, I cleared a mound of gravel yielding copper, gold, and my sixth flint chip, which I now challenge you to say three times fast. Go ahead, I'll wait. Tisk tisk, dirty mouth on you. After watching my new intern process two blocks of sand, it was clear that he just couldn't keep up, and sadly, I had to let him go. Terribly sorry, whatever your name was, but here at the Ronan Pawn Gravel Conglomerate Industrial Incorporated, we set the standard for an industry's worth of diggers, and you, sir, are no digger. In any event, you ain't my digger. See Brenda in HR as you leave, she'll validate your parking for you. My wood reserves had run low after all the renovations to my apartment, and I was down to my last wooden shovel. It was risky, but I decided to leave the house before sunrise and make my way to the forest's edge. I had just one strike left on the flint axe I'd crafted, and it was clear that I was going to need every drop of wood I could muster to get me over the hump of crafting the next one. I set off to collect the gravel I'd found the day before, and on my way noticed Frank wandering off from his duties. Hey! Frank! I'm not paying you to chase butterflies, you pumpkin-headed heathen! Get back to the farm, or there'll be no more sexy wine and mushroom parties for you, mister! Now get back over here, or I'll stow that rusted iron shovel of yours somewhere you weren't expecting. No, that wasn't a come on. Quit flirting. Get back to work, Frank. I approached the underground hallway and heard in the distance the jingle jangle of ghosts of Christmas past. Closer inspection revealed an archer popping a squat beneath the overpass. This would complicate gravel collection, but I wasn't about to be scared off by a featherweight with a quiver. The man was skin and bones, and I was plump with cheese and wine. Three rounds with the ronin pawn would show him what for. But I'd be just as happy to withhold the left jab if there were another point of entry to the gravel below, and if he'd maintain his squat popping while I dug it. It was a nerve-wracking dig, my ears pried wide listening for the clink of bones to come xylophoning their way around the corner ahead and to my right. But it was uneventful. 
No, it was all a ruse. The real threat was to the left, a ghoul, no doubt waiting all this time to lull me into a false sense of security before he and his bony minions sprung their cunning trap. I was, as stated, plump with wine and cheese, and now they had me on the leg as my colon clenched and wheezed at the sheer impropriety of it all. I pulled myself up out of the cave system and took a deep breath of relief. I'd lost him. I could relax and pluck some seeds to stay. Oh, no, no, I couldn't. None of that relaxing business. I've got a 5K to finish over here. <laughs> I ditched him at last once more, but noted that I'd left a cow betwixt our twain. I could really use another wedge of provolone, maybe if I played it coy. La la la, just picking flowers, dee 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 dee, nothing to see here. No reason for a ghoul to come over here at all. Okay, sorry bestie, but this is going to hurt, I'm in a hurry. I squeezed her till I heard something pop, curbed the cow droppings to preserve my sneakers, turned on my heels and shuffled away without a second glance. I mean, except that one. I checked my inventory when I returned home, finding no new flint to speak of, but in its place, a fresh copper nugget and a shard of obsidian. My, what a find! Why, with just... Uh, hang on, let me do the math here. Uh, carry the six, minus the three, to the power of... Yes, just 89 more of these and I can construct a nether portal. I waited out another wedge of Winamere and whittled myself the finest handcrafted stick I'd ever carved in my entire career as a... You broke it! You prick! I worked hard on that! Oh, you think it's funny, do you? Well, here then, let's see if you can break this one over your head! <clears throat> I stopped myself, took a breath, counted to ten, and realized I'd take far more joy beating him to death by hand with a silver nugget curled in my palm for the weight. <sighs> now that was satisfying. I continued digging gravel all the night through by hand, having neither shovel nor wood nor any means of restocking either. I was eventually accompanied by an early morning visitor who expressed a hope that we might barbecue together for breakfast. Much to his delight, I was able to accommodate. For an entire night's labor digging block after block of gravel by fingernail alone, I was rewarded with absolutely squat bugger all nil not a nothing. Oh, how I love this game, pawn out. <laughs>